Is this thing on? Where every day we get together and talk about carving once a week. And drink coffee. And drink coffee. I know I'm drinking a nice dark roast coffee. What do you got there? In the oh, can? yeah. I've got, um, this one's a green roast, they call it. Lime flavor. Sparkling water. Oh, yeah. There you go. Well... Right off the hop, though, our coffee heroes this week are Paz, Shawnee, Roger, and Tabitha in the unknown. So, great week for coffee. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. We appreciate it. Yeah, we really do appreciate that. Thank you, guys. But uh, not so much our friends Jim and Edna. Now, Jim and Edna are both mental patients. Hmm. One day, Jim jumps into the pool, and he doesn't come up for air. Hmm. Quick as a flash, Edna sees her friend in trouble and jumps in to save him. And pulls him out. Later, the hospital director calls Edna into the office and says, uh, Edna, I've got some good news and some bad news. She says, the good news is that you're obviously sane and you had the wits to you to jump in and save your friend Jim. But the bad news is Jim has hanged himself in the washroom. So, oh no, Edna says, that's where exactly where I put him to dry. <laughs> oh. Wow! 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 Well, have... like... Do you have any more? I can give you one more. Do you guys want some more? <laughs> oh, all right. They want more, Doug. All right. Oh, three guys are on a boat with four cigarettes, but have nothing to light them with. So, without any hesitation. <laughs> They throw one cigar cigarette overboard, and the boat becomes a cigarette lighter. <laughs> this one you've told me before, it, and the first time you read it, first of all, hold on. The crowd loves this one. <laughs> they really love this one. We'd love to hear your favorite of the two jokes. No, <laughs> at least I you? would. Alec has some new uh, some new sounds on his end, and uh, we're really enjoying them. For sure, yeah. Are we all enjoying them? All right. Yeah, totally. That's good. Well, that's, that's better enough. than my, uh, my inconsiderate nephew. He left some uh, sauces out on the counter to spoil. Mm. Talk about a spoiled brat. Dude, how many of these jokes do you have? <laughs> I, that's a delayed laugh for these guys. Oh, they're slow. I don't they know why. But... Anyway. Yeah, they really are delayed. Oh, oh boy. After. Well, folks, we are trying again to improve the quality of the show, as you can tell, with Alex's new toys here. And uh, <laughs> let us know how uh, how this sounds, because uh, we're giving it another chance, and uh, we're trying to get rid of that internet noise and uh, funk that's been uh, driving me crazy for 33 episodes. So Yeah, and you can tell my mom, if you're watching the video, if, um, hopefully you're not, because my collar is all... My mom's not here to fix, or Annalise is not here to fix it. My fiance, so is that better? I suppose it depends what you're going for. I don't know with you young hipsters if you wear colors up or colors down or. Oh, I think this is more like a Bruce Springsteen thing. There right? you go. Well, you were born in the USA. Wait, that's Elvis. <laughs> wow. What have you been up to, Alec? Well, Doug, I have been doing a lot of things that amount to what feels like very little this week. I made another video, which took me an entire half a day to edit, and about six hours to film. And now I know why you're always complaining about YouTube. Complaining? Yeah, ask me why. <laughs> why? Because you put 12 hours. <laughs> I can't even pretend to be angry. It was fun. I actually really enjoyed it. I spent like, I spent like, well, yeah, six, 12, probably 12 hours on that last YouTube video I made. Because in order to film this video of my house, it was like a, re, a house remodel video. 
I had to clean my, at least clean it a little bit, like vacuum. Yes. And then because I have like some sort of uh, hyper focus thing, I went into my bathroom and I like really focused on the bathroom. So I like, I got in my hands and knees with sprays and foam stuff and like organic stuff that supposedly that I read in the back of the bottle will give you emphysema if you inhale it too much and all kinds of crazy stuff. And so cause cancer only in California too, I'm sure. Right. So luckily we are in Michigan. I'm currently right. in Michigan. So, um, so anyway, I went ham, I cleaned my house and I made the video and it's, uh, you know, what do you expect for a guy with a C plus, uh, rating on, uh, the interweb social blade, whatever, a uh, YouTube, you know? I'm not the I'm not the I'm not a YouTuber, but I'm, well, it, I, it, I like it. Think of the bright side; those twelve hours. I mean, you're going to get at least forty six cents back. See, this is where you're cynical. I made over a dollar and a half on it. Ah, uh, I'm sorry, double, so, more than double what I estimated. Well, yep. see, there's a light. Yep. Well, stick at it. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping that next time I'll make uh, two dollars. So well, if you only put ten hours in, then you can do at least two a day going forward mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna try to redu reduce the time for sure because if i can make one of those a week and only spend two days on it yeah yeah and then yeah that then it actually starts to become reasonably profitable which is nice there you go. but doug you know i'm gonna have to pick your brain about that a little bit more you know how you uh how you do that you know and maybe when you started out how you motivated yourself to keep posting and not get and not fizzle out because there's a lot of people I'm sure who are making YouTube videos who are like uh, really frustrated at the whole thing because they've made 12 or 25 videos and then no one watches any of them and they feel like yep. they wasted their time. Ignored so. their family, wasted their time, their yep. only free time, took family vacation time away <laughs> to yep. make videos. I right. understand. Yeah, maybe they don't even they like didn't learn their they haven't spent any time with their newborn. The newborn doesn't even know who they are, <laughs> all because pipe, of this failed pipe dream YouTube. of uh, YouTube glory, yeah. <laughs> which is not real. But I watched the video; it was a good video. Was it? You can be uh, you can be honest. No, I was. Uh, it was so funny that uh, I didn't even realize that you did not film it vertically. That's how good it was. Right. So, like everybody <laughs> else's baseline is my like achievement. Yeah, <laughs> you get a little sticker for that. Uh, otherwise, I I have been talking with Brian from Rough Craft. I believe his Instagram is Rough Craft or Rough Hewn. Rough Craft. Yeah, yeah Brian Car Melton. Melton. Yeah, M Melton. And what what is his handle? Rough Brian. Anyway, Rough, rough Craft. Cut craft or something. Yeah. I'll find. Yeah, I'll find it in a little bit, and I'll shout him out. But I've been talking to him on the phone, and he is. It's fun to talk to people who are so early into carving because he is like rip roaring ready to go and like just like talking a million miles an hour and showing me all this cool stuff he's working on and just like i'm doing this show and i've got all this stuff i don't know what's gonna happen and it's like you could tell he's not done a lot of these like um you know the shows and i'm like to the point where i've done so many i'm like tired of them yeah and so it's, it's exciting yeah yeah and so what what's cool is it's like he's giving me some of that excitement back in return and reminding me about how fun it actually is what we get to do you know yeah. and he, and he, yeah. he has another job so he's not trying to make a living at it so he can kind of just have fun and explore yeah. it and kinda yeah like... he's he's really going for that uh, that yeah. uh, art genre too right like the uh galleries and the shows and stuff and uh you don't see yeah. him like selling things like uh, he's really going for the art art aspect of the carving right or am i wrong yeah i don't know i'd guess he yeah, I guess some people go more toward the art, like the art thing, and then some people go more toward the selling, and then the really lucky ones do both. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. I guess it's a little too soon to tell because he's never really done a, a sh I guess, from what I understand, he's kind of new to the art show thing. I think he's done some shows in the past, yeah. like events and stuff. But anyway, I don't want to speak too much for him because uh, he, you know, he's he could speak for himself on some other platform, but he's, uh, he's doing a good job and he's, it's, it's fun to talk to him. So he inspired me. He's been doing, he did this lady with like long flowing hair, uh, like coming out of his, coming out of his head, her head. And then he did this other carving of a woman looking up into the stars that he made these stars out of like little cross sections of wood. And I thought, you know, I really like the idea 
of like combining those two ideas and then adding other elements. So mm -hmm. I started listening to a podcast and they're talking about, okay, let me preface all this by saying this is the, and I already feel like I'm talking too much. No, what no, about you? What's good. been going on with you? No, finish your story. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. I think this whole video or whole uh, podcast is just going to be a, a conversation. So take all the time you want. I just feel, I feel like I'm talking about me too much, but um, anyway, uh, I I am gonna do this. I want to do this carving where I, it's the most pretentious carving I've ever come up with. Where I'm gonna try and like fold a meaning into it a little bit. I usually don't try mm -hmm. and do that, but then I really enjoy doing this carving for this lady who wrote a poem and then or a book, and then she gave me the book to read, and then she said make a carving about it. And we went back and forth about like what elements she wants me to tie into the carving, et cetera, et cetera. And I like that a lot. And I and I think talking to Brian on the phone about like the stories and like he's got poems and he's got like books that because he's he's a English guy. He he uh, and so anyway, he got me thinking. You know, what if I did something more in line with that commission? And uh, so this one's gonna anyway. I I don't know. I, I, I'm gonna just gonna talk about more when I actually have it. I shouldn't pull yeah. out about it, but it's gonna be it's gonna be kind of like a real more of like a relief thing, like a big long relief carving cool face on so cool now while you're talking uh i don't know if this means anything or not but uh, i don't have your your picture anymore it's gone no i'm looking at a black screen oh i got mine so i guess that's okay yeah well you're back there you are okay just kind of threw me for a loop for a minute felt it was nice a nice view but now you're back so. <laughs> i'm leaving this in now just for that but i can show you the drawing that I was using, if I, can I show you the drawing I was using? I don't even know. I don't know. It's going to have, eh, it's not worth showing you. It's gross. I got Great a couple to... of, couple of versions of drawings that I'm going to try and do. Wait, well, okay, I'll let you guys decide. How about this? Which ones do you like better? They're not finished. They're just rough. So get on the visual side of things if you're not. Um, so here's option one. Can you see? Mm -hmm. She's got a like a flowy face, the cat's in there. There's a bird kind of over here. You can't really see it because I didn't really draw it very clear yet. And it's kind of big. That's version one. And then this is version two. If you want to vote in the comments below, I'm going to use this to help me decide what to do. Then this one, her hair is like going to whip around. And then like the cat and the bird will be hidden in there. There's the cat again. There's the bird. I don't know, flowers and stuff. This is really rough. Yeah. Now, is this cat... Uh... Sponsored by your new best friend? Yeah, so all of a sudden this cat starts hanging around. <laughs> sponsored? I say sponsored. Inspired by. Dude, yeah. this cat doesn't look well off enough to be sponsoring anything. It looks like it doesn't even have a home. It's a homeless cat. And so I've been trying to figure out, like I was freaking out because this cat's running around the yard and it's whining at me and I, it's the cutest cat. So I'm simultaneously, you know, love, falling in love with it. And also angry that I, there's a cat I have to take care of. So I'm like, oh, we got to go get some cat food. And I run to my car. And then my neighbor comes over. And I'm like, come with me. I'm like, get in the car. We're going to go get cat food for this cat I just found. And then he goes along with it. He sits in the car. And then he starts laughing. And I'm like, what? And he goes, that's my cat. <laughs> and I was like, why is your cat in my backyard? It's just, do, do you guys feed it? It's been whining at me the whole day and everything. And so, anyway. I met Stevie once at his house, kind of, she was cowering underneath one of his chairs, and ever since he's just been, she's just been at my house, or they, I'm not sure what she, if it's a she or a he, and so I have been taking care of this cat, I gave it, I've been giving, is bacon bad for cats? I can't imagine it would be. Yeah, so, I've been treating it well, I think. I think bacon's better than a mouse. <laughs> Tastes better to me, anyway. I've had, I think I've had six to eight strips of bacon today. Wow. That's most of what I've had to eat. Walking around barefoot eating bacon. That's what I've been up to, Doug. What about, what about, uh, what else? Well, That's I it. look forward to seeing the uh, finished carving next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, okay, the plot thickens. Okay, the plot thickens because then I get this call from some lady from an art show who my buddy mentioned that uh, I do carving and she said, you know, we got this thing. Do you want to come to it and do like an exhibit or a workshop that's interactive? 
So I told her, like, I don't really know what that would look like. I'm working on this one carving. And she's like, that one. I told her that it's, like, about expressing, like, free will and, like, what, what is, you know, like, the idea is, like, the, the, the bird represents freedom and then the cat represents, like, um, the things that happen to us in life that cause us to make the decisions that we make. And so it's kind of like this tension is like, do we really have free will or is everything kind of predetermined? And she's like, that, I want that. And then so she's going to find out if she has the budget for it. And if she does have the budget for it, I have to save this giant piece of wood that I really have been waiting the last two days to start on. Today was the day I was going to start on it. But now I've got this giant piece of wood. Oh, boy. That I can't carve into this piece anymore. Because this lady's got to figure out if she can, if the, if this town, this nearby town can afford to have me do this public work. And then I'm going to have, if it does work out, what we, what I, what I was saying would be fun is like, because I can't have like little kids walking up and handling sharp knives at art shows and stuff, right? No. So no. I was think I was thinking maybe I can give them like paintbrushes or something and they can like fling paint at them. I would, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, the, the the cat and the bird. I thought the the bird being freedom and how the cat is uh, the enemy and can take away your freedom mm. by eating you for breakfast. <laughs> yeah, that seems more political. <laughs> I'm not trying to get political. I'm just trying to stay in the philosophical realm. <laughs> the cat is the, the cat is Biden. The cat is Trump. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> I wasn't saying that either. I was just saying that I just know that sometimes I walk out on my front step and there's a dead bird there. Yeah, right. Brought by uh, a little kitty cat. But. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe that's where, where it goes. I didn't even fully – I was telling you, I don't even know. It's not a fully developed thought yet. But it's my first time trying to – second time ever trying to make something that has like some hidden like thought or maybe literature behind it. Mm -hmm. Are you going so, to uh, write a three-page paragraph describing the carving when it's done and now how Alec the artist was thinking and how Alec carved this and – you ever see people that talk about themselves in third person oh, all the time? I did that. I did that for a little while. I when I was, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Um, I was yeah, when I trouble. I wrote a bio for my for my website a long time ago, and my friend Jill looked over it and she said, "No, it needs to be in the third person." And I was like, "So I got to rewrite this from the third person." Alec goes to the store and buys cheese. Alec comes home, cuts the cheese, and then laughs at the joke. And then she's like, "Yeah,", yeah. so. Anyway, I had to rewrite it. And then another writer friend of mine said, you got to get rid of this third person. So now I just wrote it like, <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm Alec. It's like a blog post now. My yeah. bio is like, hey, I'm Alec. You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I like it's, it's only I when think you it know is some, at least. Maybe it, it isn't. It's only when you know somebody that drives you crazy. Yeah. You know, like we here at uh, LaCasse Studios. You know, our team, our team. Uh, I never did that. No, I know, but I'm just saying, like, uh, that's. I have read place. Linker. I have read Linker Studios, though. No, you have not. <laughs> <laughs> you have not. <laughs> you may have read Linker Roofing, but. <laughs> still... Yeah, yeah. I I would build a. I would. Part of me thinks it would be fun to build a deck or like uh for like a company, but I don't think I could. I don't know. I feel like it would take away from all this time I'm sitting in the shop thinking about what I'm going to do next. Where did we just go? What's that? You want to build a deck? Yeah, I'm saying I could build a deck, but I because I, I have to build two. I have to build two decks in my backyard for yourself. Yes. Yeah, and then it got me thinking about it, and then this other, then this guy at church came up to me and asked me if I wanted to build a deck with him, and then I started thinking about would I do that, and I would do it. But I would probably – then I'd start doing it too much and then I wouldn't be doing anything else. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's my advice. Don't do yeah. it because, A, you can do a crappy job and people will hate mm. you. Or, B, you do a yeah. really good job and everybody else wants you to build a deck. And then Alec yeah. doesn't carve no more because he's a deck builder now. No, I'm not, I wasn't going to do it. I, I was just saying – that it's kind of tempting though because it would be fun to do that. But the problem is it's probably lucrative and it's probably kind of fun. But then again, all of a sudden you'd have a different career. Let me tell you something. Back in the day, do you know that a deck with railings and stairs, say a, a deck that's like 10 by 12, yeah. full railing, full stairs with railings on it. 
a deck builder can build that in a day. Wow. Just, just so you know. So. Wow. It's a uh, charge by the hour is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. Well, that's how it is in carving too. Like sometimes you make something that's awesome in like a few hours, but then if you charge an hourly rate, you wouldn't get enough for it. So you mm-hmm. charge, you charge more. So. Mm-hmm. But no, I just remember these guys were just, just cranking out decks on these, uh, on yeah. these buildings that we're building and there's just it was amazing and it's like well it's the only way to make money if, right if, if someone does comparison uh gets quotes yeah you know, so they, yeah they, they, they make good money but they need a lot of work mm. to keep themselves oh, busy right yeah but, right Cause, oh right because that's like one deck a day yeah deck a day so anyway yeah. oh la- last thing i'll say uh then i want to find out what's been going on with you is my neighbor came over to my house yesterday knocking on my shop door says that her kid is missing we have this little kid that's ru- ru- running around the neighborhood all the time in the summertime he's about yay t- yay big probably four inches tall and he and he's just always running around doing stuff he's kind of independent i think he's seven years old and all of a sudden she said he his shirt was on the ground and, and the door was open and he was gone mm. and so it's raining so i'm running around so i'm like Oh, hold on. I'm going to go get my jacket. I'm going to look for with you. She's in her car. I'm on foot running through the neighborhood looking for J- uh, Jimmy or whatever his name is. And I don't actually remember his name. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we, we didn't find him. I'm look. I'm drenched. I'm looking all over the place. I'm, you know, I'm thinking he's probably hiding in a bush somewhere if he's anything like I was when I was his age. And... And then his mom comes back over the next day because I gave up eventually. She just said, oh, you could go back, you know, and I'll, I'll keep looking. And she said she got home and the cops were – she told me this this morning that the cops were at her house. And they found him at the Oxford – I probably shouldn't say where this yeah, is, right? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah. At the uh, Oxford Circusher. The <laughs> nearest town is like seven, six, seven miles away. Yeah. Really? So, so he got on the loose and started booking it. From this, Boy. from what, yeah, so he was like, he, I think honestly, he should be a long distance runner at seven years old to run that far. That's a, that's a parent's nightmare to yep. have a lost kid. And then, then a little clue of a shirt on the floor or on the ground. Yep. That's scary stuff. The worst part is she was like, yeah. And last time this year, around this time this year, it was his birthday yesterday. His dad always comes by and steals him and kidnaps him on his birthday. Oh so goodness. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> is there... She's like, did you see a car? Did you see any? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm not looking for cars. I'm, I, you know, I'm in here watching YouTube video or whatever. <laughs> you know, like I'm, I'm carving, I'm, I'm drawing pictures on my iPad. You know, whatever it is. So, well, at least she didn't come to you because you're the creepy guy in the neighborhood that might have her kid. Oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm editing this part out, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well i did think while i was looking for him like i hope i don't i'm not like part of some trial if this kid's totally missing just because i went and looked for him with her like right. you never know about this stuff like if they're asking me like where were you on the day of the you know like oh yeah. that's a uh, man yeah well that's, anyway uh, that's a story so that's about twenty five minutes of the podcast. There Tell me go. what's what's been going what's been going on with you, man. Well, I think last week we talked like I thought I was getting sick. Yeah, not sick. That's good. I got nothing, nothing at all. And nice. uh, but that said, it's been a crazy week, like one of the craziest weeks of the whole year. But uh, very little carving. I did uh, finish that little. Uh, sailor man guy that i showed before but he's a little bit uh he's a little bit ghostly looking but he's kind of fun yeah he's, he's cool. a little bit a little bit uh a little bit odd looking but uh he's I like fun. Him. he but... kind of looks like an animation of of a of a sailor from the tim Bur- like a burton i feel like he's like the ghost sailor because his skin color just went terrible <laughs> so i kind of sanded it out so i made a real rustic look by sanding yeah. some of the paint off no, and it's getting really cool. some of the wood through it, but uh, yeah. yeah, no, it was fun. That was a challenge for me for sure. I'd never done anything like that with such deep cheeks and big chin and, and whatnot. But yeah, that, that was fun. But uh, I did manage to uh, sneak away on the weekend for a day to uh, the big city of Toronto for the uh, an outdoor adventure show, basically a show of uh, camping. 
camping show, like canoes and tents and vendors and stories and seminars yeah. and, you know, a wood carving show for campers. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it was, uh, that was fun. I got to see some buddies I haven't seen for, because it hasn't, the last two years have been canceled. So I got to meet up with some guys that uh, I know and got to chat with and yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. What else did I do? Nothing, nothing at all on the YouTube front. People are starting to really wonder what happened to me. I'm getting some messages, but uh, it's uh, it's been a tough week. The internet was out. We were going to record this podcast in their whole area. The internet was down for, I think it was like 16 hours, mm -hmm. which was crazy. What a wake up call mm -hmm. to have no internet and to realize what life used to be like. Oh, that, How dependent nice. we've become on the internet. Yeah. But apparently somebody was doing some road construction and just ripped out a major line really and uh, yeah i saw it, it came it came back on at uh it was like 11 30 at night <laughs> so yeah that was uh that was a long day for some but uh i didn't mind it too much but all that said was it's been a crazy week because uh my mother got put in the hospital last week just after we recorded so that was uh that was a, a surprise and uh and then mm. just one thing after another and uh yeah lots of uh, different communications and visits and then on the same hand my mother being put in the hospital leaves my father at home alone mm. and they're still out on the little hobby farm that we grew up on and so it's uh just so many things up in the air and so much uh discussions and uh yeah, conversations and uh, yeah, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, that's a uh, yeah, tough time. But uh, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. But uh, it's so. Yeah, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry about that. Oh no, that's uh, that's that's part of life. But uh, we'll see. Like I said, I can't. I don't know. I do like doctors. Can they change their minds? Like, it's, oh it's yeah, miscommunication or or not understanding, and it's just the, it's crazy. Hmm. But anyway, my doctor, my doctor, my mom's doctor once, uh, she she told my mom that she had a life threatening, that she had some like genetic heart defect that would kill her. That that that, that based on where it is right now would kill her in six months, uh -huh. and that it's hereditary. This is the best part, is that it's hereditary. And that my brother and I found this out because we looked up the heart disorder and we found out that there was a 50% chance um, that one of our kids has the same heart defect. Oh, wow. And, and so we were like, Kenny and I are like, you know, no, oh, man, it's definitely me. No, it's me because I'm, I'm the one who always <laughs> I pass out on the drop of a hat, man. That's got to be my heart. And then I'm like, yeah, dude, but I have low blood sugar. You know, we don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, one time I got a splinter. <laughs> and it's like, and so I definitely got it. And we're just like, dude, we're both depressed. Because we're like, there's a good chance one of us is going to die young. Yeah. Like in our 50, 40s or 50s or younger even. And so we're just like, man, this is the life is sweet. I think I was single at the time. I can't remember. I don't remember there being anyone else that I was telling this to. But, you know, he had a wife, and so it was a bummer. We were like, who's going to die? Our mom's going to die. This is crazy. So then two weeks later of just walking around in the dark and downtown, you know, the near nearest town, just melancholy, yeah. you know, under just hanging out under lamplights, looking down at, the, <laughs> at our shoes, um, in the park, just hiding in bushes, crying. Seriously, yeah. I, that's all I remember is just being at like I went to a bar. I didn't drink anything, but I went to a bar once and just sat on the bench at, at night, and I was just looking around <laughs> like I was like gonna die. Then I went in the oh, bathroom, man. called my brother. I swear I didn't even get a single drink. I just sat there. I think I asked for a water, yeah. and yeah, it was. And then I, and then the doctor calls us two weeks two weeks in. My mom and leaves a voice. My mom plays the voicemail for me. I think at the time I'm living with my mom. This is like four or five years ago. Five years ago. And the doc the nurse says, "Hey Jenny, I just called to let you know that we actually realized that the the we had someone look at the scans again, and it looks like everything's clear. You just have a heart <laughs> murmur, and that sometimes looks like some other problems, but it looks like you don't have those problems. So I just wanted to let you know that you don't need to be taking any certain medications at this point, and that everything looks okay. All right, okay, have a great day. Bye. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> 
We're gonna live! <laughs> We're gonna <Yeah>. live! <laughs> I gave that water back to the bartender and I was like, <laughs> I ran home seven <laughs> miles with my, no shirt on. Oh, uh, that's. Yeah, no, I've had stories like that too. Like, I remember, like, we had uh, one of my kids had a real bad knee. Real bad knee. Went to the doctor like three times at least. And uh, hmm. she, she ended up on crutches and uh, couldn't couldn't put pressure on that knee and uh, basically the doctor's like just she's fine walk it off it'll get better <laughs> and and then uh, like a couple months later we're like this isn't getting better so we got a second opinion and got some x-rays and stuff done and she had a tumor in her knee what they took, they took out a tumor behind her knee it was a benign tumor but it was still a tumor in her knee and, oh like, my gosh like shove that back in the doctor's face like what is wrong Holy with you? Holy smokes. And uh, I remember, this is like 15 years ago, I used to do a lot of uh, hiking. Mm-hmm. And the same thing, my knee was just toast. Like, it was in terrible shape. So I went in, and uh, long story short, the doctor put me on the routine of uh, cortisone shots into mm-hmm. my knee. He said I had severe arthritis in that one knee, and that uh, my hiking days were over. And... Uh, so I was getting these cortisone shots put in my knee whenever it flared up bad enough. And uh, long story, I keep saying long story short, but long story longer, Yeah, uh, I herniated a disc in my back. Oh. And uh, I went to the chiropractor and uh, he said, well, before I touch you, let's get you x-rayed. I don't want to, I don't want to fool around and uh, do anything that might hurt you. And I said, that's a good idea. You said this so was a said, chiropractor? The chiropractor wanted to get me x-ray, so I had to go back to the hospital to get the x-ray for the Yikes. chiropractor before he touched my back because it was in terrible shape. Oof. And uh, he says, is there anything else? And I said, yeah, well, my knee is pretty arthritic, and uh, it would be cool to have a look at that. So anyway, a week later, I go back, and uh, he says, good news and bad news. He says, uh, the bad news is I can fix your back, but it's not going to be overnight. It's going to take a few few weeks to get this back and back in place. He says, the good news is uh, I can fix your knee today. I'm like, well, how, how can you fix my knee? You're a chiropractor and it's arthritis. And uh, he said, nope, knee looks great. He says, your hips are jacked. <laughs> your hips are so out of place. He said, all the weight and everything is oh. going on that on your knee. And all the pressure is on your knee at all times because your hips are just out of alignment. He says, I can put your hips back in. And sure enough, he did that. I didn't bounce out of the office but within a day or two it was like I never thought about my knee again <laughs> yes that's really, yes, thank that's you. really thank remarkable you. that's thank really you. remarkable thank you very much yes uh, yeah I feel like I'm on Oprah the other thing <laughs> is I thought that you were see that I thought that you were about to make a joke out of that the way you told it you're like and then the doctor told me and I was waiting for one of your no, like, intro no. jokes no. true story true story <laughs> that's really good that's good though I mean at least that was yeah. Those are happy ending stories. So it's it's good to get X-rays. I told you that time that I went to, when I hurt my finger. Mm-mm. If you uh, if you if you follow my uh, channel or been on any live streams, I told the story a hundred times. This is even better than my hernia story. But uh, I had a when I was just kind of just on the verge. I, I didn't do any outdoor stuff for quite a while, and uh, my channel was kind of turning into carving and whatnot. But at the, I had a terrible year, and. Uh, I was cutting firewood, and I it was in the winter time, not not much snow on the ground, but the dirt, the mud was frozen solid. Yeah. And I went running to my truck to get something, and I tripped on a on a rut of, of mud, and I yeah. fell down hands first, and I jammed one of my fingers just right into this rut, and uh, I thought I I broke my finger, but uh, I worked all day, and it just kept getting more more sore. And then by the end of the night, it was like I, I couldn't do anything with it. And my wife said, you better go to the hospital. You broke your finger. Oof. So I went to the hospital. And I think it was like a Saturday night, and there was nobody in there. So they said, well, we're going to have to get that x-ray dug. And I said, okay. I said, are you busy? And they said, no. I said, uh, well, if you're going to do some x-rays, you want to do my uh, my ankle and my elbow while we're at it? And they were like, okay. That seems a strange request. So anyway... <laughs> Uh, long story long again, but, uh, she came back and said, your finger is severely sprained, but it's, it's not broken. It'll be okay. 
He said, the bad news again is uh, you've got two hairline cracks in your ankle and your elbow's busted. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The stuff you weren't even in there for was broken? broken? Yeah, well, the stuff I was broken. limping along, like I used to have to put my... Uh, Ow. The ankle, like I know, like the severe pain. I always take stairs like three or four at a time. And I took the basement stairs like three or four at a time. And I, the last four step jump onto the concrete floor, I landed on my ankle. Oof. And I just went down, and it was painful. So from then on, I had, to, I had to put on my, uh, once the swelling went down, I could get my work boots on and then just lace them up really tight, and then I could work all day. But the elbow thing, I don't, I don't even know when it happened. But I do know that, uh, again, I was getting treated for a tennis elbow, but it wouldn't go away. Hmm. And uh, it, was, it was catching. It kept catching. Like, I'd have to turn my wrist to unlock my elbow. Something was catching, so there's like bone fragments that were in oh, there. But man. yeah, that's, gross. that's really. So man, I uh, I don't. I've never had a broken. I've never had. A, no, yeah, never have I. No, never had a broken bone. In my life, never once. Never had well, I hadn't until this point, and I don't really. I still don't. I still don't consider them broken because. They fractured. Weren't, they weren't put in cast or fully fractured. Yeah, because one time I went, I was in my my grandparents' uh, property up north, and I and I was running. There was a giant mole hill, and it was springtime, and everything hadn't quite thawed yet. There was a big mole, you know, like a you know when the mole ex- exits out of the ground. There's a big pile of dirt. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, there's a big pile of dirt, and I was just about to launch it into the air. I went for running back. I, I stepped back about twenty feet, and then I ran, <laughs> kicked it, and then it didn't move. And my uh, I, I my my toe still is messed up. It looks all curled up like a, I don't know, a Cheeto or something. And I was just like, oh! it was like a cartoon. I went flat on my back. My legs were still up in the air like this. Yeah. And then, uh, did I go to a doctor? I can't remember if I went to a doctor or not. But I lay, I was on my back and I was screaming in pain. And this thing was like, it was like the size of a small, not a like a, I don't know, it was like a grape. It was like my toe normally is the size of a Cheeto. Now it's a grape. And so it's purple. And, oh, that hurt. Didn't bra- I don't think I bra- – I didn't go anywhere, though, so who knows if I broke so we it. Can, we can just tell uh, tell wound stories the whole time because uh, I have a story. When I was a kid, we had the this bush with this really big ravine, but one part of the ravine, the ravine kept coming away. It was really like a, a good-sized hill. But it was like a sand dune ravine, like a just one little area there. It was just all sand. And we would – the cliff was about eight feet to the dune that went down about another 25 feet or whatever, right? So you you yeah. take a, a big jump off of this cliff, but you land yeah. in the soft sand. So we right. used to have little competitions about uh, who could jump the farthest. But there, there was a creek at the bottom. And uh, this was in the wintertime, again, or maybe late fall. I don't remember. But uh, there was no snow. So we were still jumping in the sand, but the sand on the edge of the creek was wet and it was frozen solid. So it was like a rock. Mm. So I did this super impressive jump off this cliff and only I, I didn't do the the usual second bounce in the middle. I went all the way to the bottom and I landed on that frozen uh, sand Ouchie. on my knee. Yeah. And uh, I got up and my, I, could, I watched my knee just, just go, just grow into like a softball i thought it was going to explode oh. and my buddies helped me back to the house and uh this is this is my mother's story uh i go there i said i gotta go to the hospital my knee is just like ready to burst like it was just intense pain it was gonna oh. it was gonna blow the skin right out and she goes okay well we'll get you the bath and get you cleaned up go have a bath and then we'll see i'm like are you serious <laughs> Was your mother Mrs. Doubtfire? <laughs> yes, that's my that's my saint voice. She's a, <laughs> my mother. My mother's a saint, but oh. uh, she's like, okay, go go have a bath, and then we'll go in the hospital. I'm like, oh my god. So anyway, same doctor I've had my whole life too, and you'll love this story. This is I'm, uh, this is a good grosso factor for you. So it was a uh, it was a blood clot. So all they did was they took this monster needle and he couldn't draw any anything out. So all he did was jam it in there, and he just worked it around to make a bigger hole, and then just put gauze on it, and then it was slowly leaked out over a couple of days. But uh, yeah, it was disgusting. Well, if who the remaining listeners are uh, <laughs> interested in hearing one of my stories, 
One time, I. What's a good one? I burned my I burned my ankle in the same spot every time I drove a motor this motor mo, moped. My dad found when we moved into our cottage when we bought our cottage up north. There's a like a little I guess like attached like shed and in it was this uh, moped. So my brother and dad, you know, took it all apart, fixed it, got it running in 1960s like motor scooter thing with a little basket in the back. And so when I got old enough to drive it. Like I don't know, 11, 10 or eleven or something. I um, I would always bump my leg against the same spot, and it got I bumped it against it so many times that it was already burned, and I'd bump it again, and there was nothing to burn. So it was just this giant bleeding, this pussy scab that was just constantly, like every summer, constantly oozing, never healed, always oozing, always had a bandage on it. People thought that I had some sort of like. I think rare skin disorder, like, uh, <laughs> which I probably, I probably would have been better off with that than that stupid moped. And I fell off that thing so many times. I whip, I just would whip it around the, the gravel and fly off into the, into the one time I got the lawnmower stuck in our pond. I took it right <laughs> off. And my dad got a zero turn lawnmower, a brand new one, like one of those six thousand dollars zero turn lawnmowers that he yep. he had been, you know, he had the mag, he had all the magazine, like the lawnmowers illustrated stuff, you know, like with all the different brands in the t- top tier. Like the Dixie Chopper was like the most expensive one that went like twelve miles an hour, and then like the base model one that was like you had to, pu- I think it was like a push zero turn. I don't even know how that works, but. And then he got the one right in the middle and that thing was really fast and I got on it for the first time and I didn't really understand how it worked. And so I went right into our little like pond, lake pond and then I tried to turn out of it. And so half of it was in the water, half of it was out of the water. And the worst part is my dad wasn't home. And so I, I did everything I could with the old lawnmower. We had an old riding lawnmower from like the 70s. And so I drove that thing over and I tried to yank it out with some string and I could not get it to pull because the wheels are just turning. With some string. Some string, like fishing string or something. I can't remember what it was. Come I, like, on, man. <laughs> I don't know what I did. I braided some string. Or, I don't know. He probably had some towing, some like towing stuff. Yeah. Well, I don't remember what it was, but I couldn't pull it out. And I had to face my dad with his brand new lawnmower in the lake. And well, that was not fun. my dad didn't get a riding lawnmower until all the boys moved out. Otherwise, because we all put, we He's all smart. pushed it. <laughs> we all had, we had to push. As soon as we were guys, like, oh, time to get a rider. Yeah. But, uh, okay, before we hit the mailbag, I'll tell you one quick <clears throat> burn story. You just yeah. reminded me of another fantastic story. I'm very fortunate to still be alive, by the way. But uh, <laughs> I can see that. Do you know what? You kind of have that vibe. Do you know what an alcohol stove is? A little camping stove, very really lightweight. Uh, like uh, the most yeah. popular would be like a Trangia, a little brass one. But uh, I used to Trangia? make them. Trangia, 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 yeah. But uh, we <laughs> sounds make... like a very modern version of Pangea. No, I don't even know what that is Pangea. Mm. Anyway. But we used to make uh, make them out of uh, cans. Mm-hmm. You would uh, cut the top and the bottom off a can, two cans, and you put fit them together, and then you put a wick around it to prime it. But you put little tack holes around it. You put about a, an ounce of uh, alcohol into it. And they would make a nice little camp stove, and it's super light, like just grams, like just mm. you know the weight of the pop can, mm. an inch tall. So they were super lightweight uh, camp stoves. So I was all happy. I was in my workshop making all these things. I was so impressed, and uh, I called the kids down. I said, "Look what your dad made," and uh, I showed them this little this little stove, and I went to light it. But alcohol burns without a a flame color. Mm-hmm. Like you, very hard to see other than the ripples of heat that it's even burning. You put your hand over, you can feel it burning, but it's not uh, almost invisible. So I showed the kids, I put it down and uh, I put alcohol in it and I took a match and I lit it. And I thought, that's done out. But the whole time I had the, the uh, liter bottle of the alcohol and the little the cap. And I thought, I'll just put another cap of uh, alcohol on the on the stove and light it again. Not knowing that it was uh, it was still lit. <coughs> Excuse me. So I took the little cap of alcohol, went to put it on the stove, and then it just flared up because it was already lit. Came up my arm because I had spilled some when I poured it on the cap on my hand. So now I have my my hands on fire, but I'm holding the leader, and it jumped to the hand that was holding the leader because I had just sloppy 
splashed it all over. So now this hand is on fire with the open liter of alcohol with the cap off it. And the kids are going, ah, ah, ah. and I threw it down. And then when I threw it down, of course, then the whole right, like I'm standing in an inferno. And then I so I'm stomping it out. And while I was stomping it in the flames, in the panic, I stomped the bottle and then I blew the alcohol across the <laughs> workshop and I lit, uh, lit everything on fire. That it, oh. uh, and all oh, the kids were screaming. And I'm sitting there trying to stomp this fire out. Meanwhile, the whole time my leg is burning. And I'm putting the, putting this fire out because there's sawdust and everything in my workshop. Yeah. It lit it lit the, uh, the 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 old kitchen cabinets I had for workbenches and stuff. Like the sides were on fire and stuff. So I'm putting it all out. My wife comes down. What's going on? And I said, "Start filling the laundry tub." And I kept putting out the fire. And anyway, by the time I got over there, I pulled my what was left of my pants up, stuck it in the laundry tub, and my skin was just floating on the top of the on the top of the uh, water. It's just gross. Your and, skid? Uh, my skin was just floating all over. So I went to, I didn't go to the hospital, but my uh, my niece and my sister-in-law are both nurses, and I got in big trouble, and they came over and re every day for a couple of weeks. It was horrible. Oh, yeah. I had a scar probably a foot long, about this big around on my leg. Oh. But, yeah. Yeah. Fire. Fire hot. Fire Man. burning. One time my buddy, speaking of fire, lit, <laughs> flicked a lit match. Like, he was flicking them, you know, they'd buzz yep. and they'd hit the ground. Yep. Well, he did right and hit my eye. Went in my, went in my <laughs> oh. eye. I couldn't, I couldn't see for a day and a half out of that That's eye. That's scary. Yeah, I thought I was blind. Well, man. I don't think it was the, I don't think it was the first person that he blinded either. <laughs> no, and then my other friend threw a, you know that game that you play when you live in the country and you stand in the woods with a bunch of trees in between you and you throw sticks at each other? That's a game we used to play. Whoever hit each other first wins. No, we did that with pellet guns. But anyway, go ahead. We did no, no. We did that with pellet guns too. Don't get me wrong. But I'm saying we did it with sticks before. And uh, actually, my friends didn't know we were playing with the pellet guns. I would just shoot them. But then the same guy, Anthony. Anyway, so I threw a. St- uh, my buddy th- was playing that game with his buddy and threw a stick and it went right in his eye and took his eye out. He couldn't took, see. Took, really? Yeah, Permanent? They called him. Yeah, they literally called him One Eyed Johnny after that. They had a oh nickname my for him. Wowzers. Legitimately took his eye out. All right. Well, speaking of blinding people, we used to have these big bush parties when we were in high school. And me and my friends would uh, make these little balloons with the oxygen and acetylene and uh, fill the balloon. Yeah. You've never seen anything like it. We would just stand back like a, a bush party would have a big bonfire. And we would just lob these balloons on the ground and just kind of kick them towards the fire, kick them towards the fire, kick them towards the fire, and then take a stick. And no one no one's has any clue at all. Yeah. When that balloon, when that flame hits the balloon, it is blinding, mm-hmm. deafening. It's nothing like you would ever imagine. It <laughs> actually, the biggest bonfire, it would immediately, immediately just put it out. It would suck all the oxygen out of the air. <laughs> and it just blow, and everybody around is screaming and blind and deaf for, for oh. ten minutes. Fun game. <laughs> Let's move on. Mail call. Mail <laughs> call. All right, here we go, everybody. Thank you for. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully, there's a carving uh, question that we can call us a carving show. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. That would be nice. Is my microphone turned on? Hey, hey, hey. All right. I think it is. Does this sound better? Anyway, yep. this is from James. Hey, Doge and Alex. Uh, he just says Doug and Alec. Hey, I'm a 16-year-old kid from Ontario, Canada, and I learned carving from Doge right back before lockdowns. Quotations, yes. Really good hobby for them, by the way. For them. For Canadians, I guess. I'm just wondering how you guys clean up your shops after carving and or what shop system do you guys have to aid in that process? Thanks for all the great videos you've been putting out. Your friend, James. Wow. Well, on my end here, because I'm on a a carpeted floor up here, I have a, uh, I think I showed it a while ago, but uh, I have like a suitcase sized uh, battery operated vacuum. Mm. And I just grab it and, and run around really quick every time I do a carving. Mm-hmm. But uh, downstairs, I just have a, a bigger central vac. But uh, yeah, I have right. no uh, no real good uh, vacuum system. That's what I like about chips rather than dust. Yeah. 
No, that's true. That's what's nice about you, hand carving is you don't really make a lot of dust when you're hand carving. No. So, I use yeah, I just use a broom and I have I, I use a broom and I have a vacuum that I just bought like a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I've used it twice. I think I've used it a couple of times. I'm kind of dirty, like the everything's covered in chips right now, but I try and keep it clean in here, cleaner than my house a lot of times. I'm in well, here a lot more. Yeah, this room I always say I said the the, the work the carving's not done until it's cleaned up. That's mm-hmm. always part of my regimen because I know like my workshop is a disaster, but this carving room every time I finish a carving, I clean up immediately or it's the carving's not done. I don't even show anybody the carving in my house until I've cleaned the it's just part of it. So, do you feel like it distracts you if it's dirty or it like misses messes with your head? I feel like if I don't do it immediately, mm-hmm. that it will just get worse and worse and worse, and a and a five minute job will turn into a day and a half job in time. Yeah, right. And I don't. Yeah, I don't feel. I, I feel dirty. I like I like cleanliness. I'm a clean guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get like if you feel like something's off or maybe yeah. not quite right. Yeah. This is from Michael. Michael says, started in carving about a year ago, and I've learned a lot from you guys. Make it your own. Wood is wood. <laughs> and try different tools helped me. Carve this 8-inch gnome from a piece of wood from a pallet. Nice. There you, yeah, I'm not sure if that was one sentence. Okay, Alec, don't sell your Comanche. Wish I still had mine. Thanks, Mike. And then here's a picture of him, or just his Comanche. But if my Comanche looked like that, I wouldn't no, sell you, it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Mm. My Comanche is not, it could be a lot, I've seen worse, but, yeah, and, uh, okay, it's, okay, Stan, oh, let's see, lots of stuff here, thank you very much, Stan, nice stuff, um, feeling the need to branch out and carve larger things, I may look into an online class, okay, I don't think there was a question in here, okay, anyway, Shaney, Shani, yep. how is it? Yeah. I forget. We had it right the first time, though, whatever we said, because she said that we, we said her name right, but now I can't remember which way it was. Yeah. Her question is, I'd like to start working on a little three-inch female counterpart for the little men that she's making and eventually work up to making little families. She is a social worker by day, after all. I am, she says. I plan to experiment on my own, but in preparation, I've been looking for tutorials and information discussing the difference in male and female faces... And it found nothing that uh, applies specifically to knife carving. I'm wondering if you, you wondering if you have any advice to help get me started. Thanks in advance. Huh. Little three inch little women are are very difficult to make women, like because you can't really get the the characteristics like outside of the hair. Like, mm-hmm. for example, here's a little girl. Yeah, that's good. I just make sure they have like a uh, woman hair, and uh, I always make them that's a really che- good. A little chesty. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. and, yeah, uh, a lot of guys do that. I feel like a lot of people do that. Well, it's just it's just so hard to. Uh, otherwise, it's it's just hard to to get the the facial features because you're dealing with so you, a quarter of an inch, you know, right. here and there. So you don't get all like you don't get the subtle <laughs> subtle hints that make it a woman. <laughs> But, <laughs> take it easy so, um, <laughs> alright so that's that, thank you did that answer her question I think it's hard well, make, them, make the boobs it's, bigger it's just, just make them chesty and do, do <laughs> long hair okay alright hello Alec Doug I'm trying to Doug and Alec sorry I don't know why I read my name first <laughs> flattering myself here I'm trying to find a cottonwood bark Thing trees in my area. All I can find is one inch thick. Is that how? Is that th- thin? <laughs> I'm so confused. Down, and how do you guys mount it to carve? Keep up the good work. I enjoy watching you guys. Yeah. You, you got to work with what you got to. <laughs> I mean, you got, you have one inch. You got one inch. That's the best you can do. You're not. Where are you gonna drive to South Dakota? And yeah, maybe, maybe, or you can go online and order a three hundred fifty dollars box of bark like Doug does, but not everyone's rich. Oh, so boy. I can't even afford that bark, and I'm, I'm, but I'm kind of poor though, so it makes sense. 
You have money for what you want, don't you? Yeah, I bought this microphone this is for the podcast. There you go. That's yeah, the same as mine. Yeah. I think so. I think yours is newer. Mine I bought from a it ha, from a cat man, a cat guy. You know, let me tell you something. This is my new thing. I, I'm sick of people telling me they can't afford things, or it must yeah. be nice to have this or that. Yeah. You have people have money for what yeah. they have want. You know what I mean? It's right. So. Uh, no, like uh, I said, I have said six pieces of bacon today. That would that's <laughs> that's like six dollars. That was my that was my breakfast. A yeah. six dollar bacon breakfast. Yeah. I got this uh I, I got this homeless guy that I have to deal with on a regular basis and he's always looking for for a meal and I don't mind food. But he's always smoking. Like mm. how can you afford to smoke if you don't have money to eat? Yeah. Uh, anyway, sorry. That was a side tangent, but <laughs> No, but yeah, I don't I don't really smoke, but Okay, so Chris Brown says, ooh. This is a controversial, one of our most controversial contributors, Chris Brown. Well, I'm sure it's not the Chris Brown you're thinking of. That must be a very common name. Yeah, it does seem. Catching up on all the episodes, and I just wanted to drop a note, say thank you, love it, listening on Apple Podcasts. Um, unless y'all are showing, I'm interested in, then I write it down and go to YouTube and watch it. Oh, or showing something, gotcha. Alex, selling the Comanche? Question mark, question mark, question mark. I'd be interested, seriously. Hey, Doug, how do you fix a broken pumpkin with a pumpkin patch? Oh, no. I thought it was a real question. No, I got a good one. Why did the go. Scarecrow get an award? No, this is from Chris, by the way. I'm stealing his Okay. Game. Because he was outstanding in his field. All right. That I might, like that. I like that, that might be the best one so far. In bad. fact, that absolutely deserves... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Um, you two have a great one. Keep it up. He's from Wheeling, West Virginia. That's a great place to live, from what I've heard. So yeah, Chris, I'll let you know if I sell it. You'll be the first to know. How about that? Mm. So Doug, don't maybe don't delete this email because maybe I'll decide to sell it and then I'll give him a call. And that's it, folks. That's everything. Thank you for the emails. Um, really appreciate it. Yeah, no, for sure. What is your What is your what? featured? Uh, oh, I was just going to say, he said that he, he listens to the Apple podcast and then goes to yeah. YouTube after. I am still curious about the YouTube or uh, versus versus the audio and how many people actually listen to the audio or, or mm. count on the audio or they just watch the YouTube. So I'm if you're to... listening to the podcast on audio platforms, tune in on YouTube and put a comment on this video and tell us if you're listening to it via Apple because otherwise we can't tell. Yeah, and also, uh, yeah, if if it's such, if it, if it's a small enough number, like we we can show more stuff on YouTube, right? So we'll I'm just curious. get rid of it. Yeah. So. Media. Media. Oh, I can't sing it. Whoa! No, I you have, had it. I have a. You good had a one. harmony. I have a good one today. Yeah. I, I, that's the only one you ever get. <laughs> I'm not even gonna do it again. <laughs> I got this was sent to me by uh, Michael Prey or Pear, but I'm I'm going with the French theme here with Pere. But mm. uh, he sent me a link to a video and I loved it by Sylvain <clears throat> Gautier. Now Sylvain makes a mechanical whale. You know, like uh one of those ones yeah. you crank it but he carved it and it's it's fantastic. What are those called? Uh a cranky automata. 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 Yeah, but uh, I listen. I watched the video that was it was a short version of six minutes and twenty six seconds. It's called mm -hmm. "Making a Mechanical Whale" by mm -hmm. Sylvain Gautier, and that's mm -hmm. Sylvain S Y L V A I N and G A U T I E R on YouTube, mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. I I really really loved it. So I mm -hmm. reached out or in a comment, and I just said, "Great work," and uh, he came right back and said. Uh, Thanks, Doug. Uh, you're one of the ones that got me carving. I'm like, wow, you're so much better than me. So that's that was great. Cool. I love that. But no, uh, real, that real well put together video. And I just love seeing when I'm stuck in uh, doing beginner land, watching someone just take off like that and just do amazing work. So love it. Yep. It's yep. just the action. It's not just a wiggling whale. Like that whale's got some real good action in it. So. 
go check him out and give him some love because it looks like uh, he's just kind of new to the YouTube game, but uh, he makes a beautiful <laughs> video and a great uh, a great product. Hmm. Hmm. How about you? Br- uh, I told you guys I'd tell you what Brian because I mentioned Brian. It's Brian Melton Wood Sculpture, and his handle on Instagram is Rough Cut Craft, all one word. Yeah. yeah. And he is working on. Let's see if I can find it. What was the one that got me excited to call him? I think it was this one. Yeah, I really like this one. He he's got this. Uh, he did this in. I think it's in pine, but he painted it white, and I really like the way he painted it. I mean, I just like the way he carved it, left all the cuts in it and stuff. And mm-hmm. yeah, he's doing a good job, really good job. So anyway, that's it for me. Otherwise, I've just been, I read a book about, what is it? Manifest, Communist Manifesto, just to, because I bought it years ago and never read it. And it was like, I figured it was mostly because it was an easy read. And I guess people are supposed to read that so they know what communists believe. <laughs> I don't know. That's it. Well, that is a wrap. Episode number 34. We didn't think we had anything to talk about, and uh, here we are at uh, a good hour again. Take your vitamins. See you next week, folks. (laughs) 